Hey everybody, Nerd Transformed here again, and today I'm continuing my Transformers Platinum Edition Autobot Heroes set reviews with the trans with the uh, Deluxe Class RC of, of the set. Now this RC is the same as the Generations RC that came out, and unfortunately I do not have the original Generations RC nor the Legends, the, uh, Legends Deluxe one, so I do not have a comparison, and I will be going over the full transformation in this video since I have not reviewed this figure before. Compared to the others, this RC is much more G1 accurate. Uh, the Legends one was very close, but I feel like this one does it a bit better. And of course, the one we got in America, the Generations version, was based on the comic book IDW colors. This RC, you notice the Deluxe is a much smaller car. As you can see, if we put it next to Combine Wars Prowl, maybe not in width or length, but if you actually set them down next to each other, you see she's a lot thinner, a lot smaller. If you look on the other side, she's not quite as chunky either. There's a lot of empty space in this RC. And just to get in our comparison, here, is next, here she is next to Wheelie from Titan's Return. But her vehicle mode does look really good. She does have some nice blue paint on the front for the headlights and the... I'm not sure what you call that, a little vent, maybe? Some kind of vent? You do get a tiny Autobot tampo on the front there, as well as a bigger one right here. You do get some nice white around the headlights as well as a little vent, as then it turns to pink all the way back, giving you that nice kind of Barbie pink color, I guess you could call it. Goes back to white right before the windshield. On the inside, you actually do get some detail of a steering wheel, possibly a stereo or AC vent, something, some little control panels, and some chairs that turn gray in the back, which does help break up all the white and pink. Uh, the sides are pretty much clearly her legs just kind of folded up under the wheels, but they do blend in with the back part of the car fairly well. So at least it's not just her hips sticking out, it's just from the side, yep, there's her knee joint. She does have this little pink thing sticking up, just like Blur. Not sure what you call this, an antenna? And, um, a spoiler? What, both? Who knows? And you do get some kind of metallic paint, pink paint going down this in stripes here as well, a little bit on the sides there. So she is fairly well painted, and that's what she looks like from the bottom where her arms just kind of hang in there. She does come with a bunch of accessories. She has these two clear blue swords, which are based on her IDW swords, as well as her two G1 style guns, her blaster, which looks pretty nice, and fortunately is not painted in like the other two versions, but it's still there. And of course this little tiny pistol or submachine gun or plasma gun, some kind of other pistol. And she does have a, plenty of ports to equip all of her weapons in vehicle mode, such as putting the swords on the soap. They do not hold on too well, but they do tab in fairly easily. And the guns you can mount at the back to give her some cover fire for when she's driving, like so, which doesn't look bad. But her guns do have some undercarriage storage, if we take the swords off so it just knock them off. You'll notice right here there is a tab and there is a little tab hole there. And what you'll do, you'll take this tab here it'll fit right in there and the little tab stick up here will fit right in this little gap here. And the gun will only fit in like this. Like so. And that stores it away and you can see it sticking out the back there but it is stored away. Uh, the other gun actually works into her transformation as if you take it there is a little tab hole right here that tap you can put the pistol's handle into and just push it in there. And then the little tabs on the other side of the gun, the hands will actually grab onto. You don't start untransforming her. If you just rotate the hands just right, she'll actually grip the gun, the sides of the gun, like so. And they'll actually tap her arms into place, which is pretty nice. And the accessory is not necessary. If you do lose the gun, you can still transform her just fine. Just the hands aren't. Uh, tapped in is all. So it's kind of an interesting thing. If, it, if that kind of thing bugs you where you lose the accessory, well, just don't lose the gun. I, I hope you don't lose the gun, but you can also mount the swords on the back where the guns were. If you just want to have them stored without having them sticking off the sides. So yeah, unfortunately no undercarriage storage for the swords, but it is a little busy in there, so kind of understandable. So to get the transformation, we're going to take the weapons back out. Unclip her hands from the sides there. The other gun can be kind of tricky. Move her arms out of the way. And... Oh, one moment.
Oh man, that's really. I had to pull away from the camera and try to get a better grip on it, and it's still not. There, finally. Alright, so just pull that back out from under there. Get the arms out of the way, take the legs, go ahead and pop them upward, like so. I'll release them from there, and once you start moving them, it'll untab it from the back here, which will end up flip this up on a hinge to get it out of your way. Flip the legs all the way down, you can see they're kind of coming out to the sides. So just collapse the hinge there on top of itself to form her hips. Flip the feet forward. Tone to the back here, it will bend a hinge right here, which will help collapse up some of that kibble. The arms are on these struts, so you can bring them out to the sides so her ball joints are in the proper place. Then come up here, take this little panel here, flip it up. Come to the top here where this where the little tiny Autobot logo is and just kind of bring this panel down. And you can see where her head was hiding. This whole backpack piece will come unclipped and you see it's on a little double hinge strut, bringing it down. Basically laying this kibble on top of the other kibble. Make sure the arms are all the way down, the struts are at least. Then you're going to take the chest and the head, just kind of bring it on down. It'll fit over the struts. It'll peg in all throughout the chest in the crotch region. And Arcee's head will actually peg into place, forming her neck and neckline. And there you have the Platinum Edition Arcee in her robot mode, if we can get her standing. There we go. All right, so now that we got RC in robot mode, you can see she does make a really nice looking RC. She could almost pass for a masterpiece, really. Uh, one of the main problems with this figure, of course, is all the kibble. But considering how thin RC was, how thin RC really is as a character, as well as how thin the vehicle mode already was, they really tried to do their best here. Only way I could really think if they did better if they somehow made a Legends class that got really tall, kind of like how Anime Lockdown was. But that would probably be a little too tricky. So I think they did fine for what they had. And this isn't meant to be a masterpiece RC anyway. It does make for a good chug style, uh, classics or generation style RC. Uh, her feet are a little tiny, so you gotta be careful of her ankles. Mine are slightly loose. Do gotta adjust them for that backpack. Ticket size comparisons out of the way. Here is she is next to Prowl from Kamai Wars. And next to Wheelie from Titan's Return. And you can see, yeah, she is a bit shorter than the average deluxe, as well as a lot less chunkier and wide. But she is still deluxe size, as she's still much bigger than a Legends figure. Plus a lot of her bulk is back here, of course. So to go over all the details, she does have her Princess Leia style buns on each side of her head. Her face is nicely painted in pink. She does have blue light piping, as you can see right there. The helmet is actually all painted in white as well as a tiny bit of lipstick for the lips, which is pretty nice. Do get the blue vent here that's now making her chest. Her abdomen is painted in gray with a little bit of pink top here. And a red line going through, which is pretty accurate to the cartoon if I remember correctly. You can see the details that were for the side of her vehicle mode do work here. And they don't even look like really the size of a vehicle. I mean, there are the wheels sticking out from her butt, I guess you could say. Are those butt wheels? They might be butt wheels. They are sticking out, but they are. It makes it still doesn't really look like a vehicle per se. So it is pretty nice that she does have a fairly accurate model to her cartoon her cartoon self. Does get a little bit of paint there, and as well as some detail inside the knee. Tiny little blue square just to fill in that detail there. Grave around the ankles and her feet herself do have that hot that uh, hot pink on the ends there. And she does have heels, so they do. She does stand decently if you bounce her right. You do gotta bounce her a bit due to her large backpack. But those where the accessories can kind of help. She does have plenty of places to put them. As you can see, there are two tab holes under on the underside of the car, front car bumper, so you could have to give her some overhead guns. She does still have use of the bump, the back bumper tab holes, although it is kind of tricky to use them depending on which weapon you try to uh, peg in, like so. You do have this use of the side part still, so you still have her carrier swords on her hips, like so, if you can tap it in properly. Her hands are especially made to where they unfortunately don't think can carry 5mm port guns like all other fig transformers, or like most other transformers. 
but her guns and swords do fit in her hands pretty well, although they are a little long and they don't go down in her hands since she, she does have this part, bottom part of her hand away. So you're kind of stuck with holding the tip of the handles on everything. And they do have really, really long handles, so that does get in the way a bit. But you could also arm her on her uh, arms themselves, I guess you could say. The swords do pagan. The guns also pagan here, if you wish. If you want to give her a Megatron style uh, arm gun, like so. Just to show how that looks. Or you could, if I can get this one out, oh, have her hold them. And you can see, yeah, they do stick out with the swords. It's not so bad, but with the guns, it looks really odd since her hand's nowhere near where the triggers are. But you could have her holding all of her accessories on her arms. It does make her look fairly dangerous. Let's get her put all that down. Because now we're going to go over articulation. Her head is on a ball joint. It's a little loose, but it does hold poses pretty well. It can look that far up. Can look slightly down. Can turn around, although her head, it could cause a uh, peg to pop off. She does have full ball jointed arms, full swivel. Only one el only one elbow joint, but it goes over 90 degrees, so it's almost a double elbow, which is pretty nice. Nothing at the waist, but considering how trans she transforms, I kind of expected that. Do get full movement in the legs, despite how it transforms, going all the way forward, and goes that far back before bumping into the kibble does also go outward, which can be kind of tricky, so you got to work both the hinges that she has. But she can splay her legs that far. If you, She can't do a full split quite, but close enough for me. You do get a swivel right below, above the knee. As well as, a, it's, I went against a single hinge, but the hinge goes so far that it's almost a double knee joint. Which is pretty nice. And you do get some ankle articulation going forward and going back. So that's pretty nice. So you could get her doing some kind of stepping pose. I'm not sure what kind of stepping pose this is supposed to be, but you could have her stepping forward if you get her to balance. Like so. I don't, I'm not sure what this looks like. She's trying to do like uh, Shakespeare over here. But as you see, she is quite flexible of her articulation. Honestly, if, it, if she just had a waist joint, she'd pretty much be perfect. But yeah, that's Platinum Edition uh, Autobot Heroes RC, the also known as the Generations RC, also known as the Legends RC. She is a really good figure. She does have some issues. I do wish there was a bit less kibble, and not that it's just, it's not really that it's ugly, it's more just, it does give her some balance problems. Like, does not take a lot to knock her down. You, like I mentioned, you can use accessories to kind of help balance her with that, especially if you have her holding her guns forward, and that will greatly help her balance better. But besides that, she's a great figure. Whether, no matter which version you have, really, this is a good RC. And if you want an IDW accurate colors for her, get the Generations version. If you want G1 but slightly different, get the Legends version. They're all good figures. They're all pretty nicely painted. This is just the one I prefer, and I would highly, highly recommend it, especially if you were interested in the other figures in the Platinum Edition set. So yeah, she's a really good deluxe. So. This has been Nari Transformed. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I hope you have a good day. Take care.